Good Monday morning, David Fiorazzo and Mike LeMay. Welcome to another edition of Stand Up for the Truth. You are going to hear the Word of God proclaimed in this show, and you can believe it. It is eternal truth. We're also going to share some opinions and perspectives with you. Be as the Bereans and take everything to the Word of God to determine if it's truth. Our introduction this morning, very simple. Are we prepared? Well, before we ask that question of our guests, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the beauty of life. And Lord, as we look forward to the day of your return, may we also be focused on our responsibility and joy each and every day. Lord, that we might proclaim your gospel to the lost. Father, that we might love one another as you loved us first. Lord, may you build your beautiful church. May it storm the gates of hell and rescue the captives. And we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, are we as Christians prepared for the days ahead? You know, none of us know exactly what's ahead. None of us know the day of the return of the Lord. But we are to be prepared spiritually, economically, physically, while joining us to help us understand what it means to be prepared, our good friend Carl Gallops. He is author of Be Thou Prepared. Carl, welcome back, my friend. Mike and Dave, thank you for having me. I I always look forward to being on this show with you guys. We do, too. We do, too. Well, we've been getting through your book the last couple times, and I want to start off today in Chapter 9, and a very interesting story. Uh, You start off with a story of a Virginia congressman by the name of Frank Wolf, and he's warning about the genocide from ISIS. He's challenging the president and the Congress to do something, and you state that most Christians were cheering him on until he asked a question that hit too close to home. Where is the church? Where is the yeah. church? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's so important. He raised a very important issue. That was in 2014. Here it is, the beginning of 2016. Some churches have awakened to their responsibility in this, but I fear many still have not. And what the congressman was was uh, decrying was the fact that, you know, entire Christian communities were being eradicated. In fact, Christianity itself in certain areas of the Middle East, at least mainstream media headlines have proclaimed, have been exterminated and and or are in the process of being exterminated. Now we know, several years after that congressman made that statement, we've got several hundred thousands of Christians that have been either slaughtered or tortured or raimed, uh, maimed or raped or brutalized. We've, we've got millions that are on the run and refugees, and, and not just Christians, but, you know, people in general. But, I mean, uh, but among those, a large population of those are Christians. Um, 30, 40, 50,000 little children that have been orphaned and having to be airlifted out of the area. And this genocide of, of many of them, God's people, continues to march on. And in a lot of Christian churches in America, I, I was going to use the word most, and I modified it by saying a lot, but I, I think statistically it's still most. In most Christian churches, every Sunday morning, I, I mean, it's, you know, hear, hear a feel-good uh, sermonette, uh, sing a few songs and go home, and fight over the color of the carpet, and, and you know, <laughs> let's go to Starbucks, let's go to the restaurant, let's watch the latest football game, and everything is good with the world. And it's not. The world is coming unraveled at the seams, starting in the Middle East, which is very prophetic. And this congressman said, where are America's churches? You know, God has blessed us, Mike and Dave. Our blessing is not only a blessing, but it could be a curse, because we, we just wallow in the blessing and the luxury and the peace and the power and the safety, and we forget what's happening in the world around us. We're living in such prophetic times. We are. And Carl... Well, how can the church begin preparing to offer hope to uh, the people when the economy and social structures in our nation begin to collapse? Yeah. Well, listen, guys, one of the things I emphasize in the book is we've got to come out of this this unrealistic way of thinking that, you know, that everything is leave it to beaver, you know. And, yeah, again, the last 50, 60 years in America, we have kind of insulated ourselves. We've been... The last 50 or 60 years in America, we've become so powerful, so economically strong. And and I know know, there are economic problems now in the world, and we have a great debt, etc. But I mean, just we're still the number one superpower. We're still the number one economy to which the rest of the world looks. We're still the number one nation to which the rest of the world wants to come, beating down our borders. And so, uh, you know, the church has got to understand, listen, this, this little speck, in the, in, 
the history of humanity. We're, this is an anomaly. I, I pray we can continue to go on for some generations living with such peace and prosperity. But the way the world is headed, and if I understand the scriptures correctly, that may not be true. So, so it's time that, that we come out of our little shells of, of, of surrealness, and we understand that for the vast majority of human history, people have had to struggle. People have had to talk about survival and community and, and fellowship and, and, and sticking together and taking care of each other and, and pooling and resourcing, uh, pooling resources. So, so your, your question, you know, I was setting, I was setting it up, but the, the answer to your question is pastors and pulpits are going to have to wake up and come alive. We're going to have to get our churches discipled in these things. Understand, we don't have to wring hands. I'm not running around claiming the sky is falling. I'm not a date setter. I'm just saying that we, a lot of this is coming to our shores now, mm -hmm. and we are going to have to wake up to the fact that we may have to adjust, we may have to tweak our way of life and the way we do church and the way we think about the world. We are living in prophetic times, and the church must wake up to that fact. We agree, I think, wholeheartedly, Pastor Carl. And the question is, since many pastors, and I say many, are probably um, not going to be listening to this program or reading your book, I, I hope there are a lot, but let's just assume that many are not, how can the lay Christian, the lay person, how can the average individual concerned and informed Christian approach their pastor so that they will address these issues or, or you know, do the things that you are talking about? Yeah, thank you. No, that's an excellent question, Dave. As a matter of fact, a lot of lay people are approaching their pastors with my book, and perhaps <laughs> others like it. But, but I mean, I, I get emails every day about this. Uh, that they, that, you know, a lay person will get a hold of the book. They've seen me on a television show. They've heard me on a radio show. They've seen me in print media. They've heard me speak of these issues. They get the book. They read it. I wrote it at, at in, in a way that from seventh grade up, people could grasp this immediately. I wrote it in a way that everybody sitting in a pew that is of reading age uh, could get this and apply it, and it's written very practically and logistically. And a lot of people have read it and said, oh my gosh. In fact, I had two people in my own church last week came to me and said, you know, I've, I've I'm, I'm a reader, but it's just been a while, and, and I put off reading your latest book, but I read it, and I'm just kicking myself that I hadn't read it earlier. My family, we're implementing so much of what's in your book. We're so proud that you're teaching and preaching this stuff here. We just are overwhelmed by it. That was from my own church. <laughs> so it is happening, uh, but I say to your listeners, um, look, it, 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 I, I, it sounds like I'm trying to sell this book. I, it's just the book is so unique. Get the book, read it, and and implement it in your family, and and it shows you how. It's very easy. Uh, get it to your pastor. Put it in his hands and say, because it talks about church security. It talks about church um, uh, networking. It talks about how to do these things. It talks about how to, uh, how to prepare a church family as well as individual families for any kind of an emergency, uh, natural disasters, as well as the possibility of some terrorist attack or some attack on your church or church community. So that, that's what I say, uh, Dave. You, you, people are just going to have to understand the, the reality of the world in which we're living now mm. and, and, and educate themselves and make some preparations. It doesn't have to be my book, but they need to immerse themselves in understanding the times in which we're living. Mm. Or they're going to be caught unawares, and that could be very, very desperate and very dangerous. Indeed, it can.